All right, let's uh, review a couple of things that we uh, worked on uh, last week, just so we know where we are. Uh, we, um, we talked about um, how to get uh, a connection going with uh, MongoDB uh, from, uh, from Node.js. Uh, we first did it uh, manually using the uh, Mongo client. Uh, and then we, um, we, we moved over to see how we could uh, connect to the, uh, to the database uh, from within a Node.js uh, uh, application. Uh, we, uh, we created a, um, a, 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 um, a Node a project, right? We, we created a directory, we went in there, and we uh, typed npm in, in it, uh, and that created a, um, a project uh, file in there, yes, that describes our project. And we installed a couple of dependencies uh, including the Express and uh, Ma uh, Mongoose. Uh, the Express, we played around with it uh, uh, with a hello world, right, where we uh, uh, connected in and, and uh, so that we can hit it with a get request, right, and respond it with a hello world. Uh, and uh, so what I'd like to, like to talk about uh, today is, well, how is it that we can expand on that and, uh, and start uh, interacting with the uh, Mongo database, right? Instead of doing it at the, at the command line using the Mongo client, how, do, how can we talk to, uh, to the database, right, from within Node.js? Uh, so to do that, we're going to be using the Mongoose uh, library. And the uh, Mongoose library allows us to implement something that is missing on the MongoDB uh, uh, databases. They don't support schemas, right? Uh, us that are coming from uh, a relational database uh, background, uh, we are, we're always very careful about our schemas, about uh, fields, uh, what, what the data types they have, uh, any relationships that the, that the fields might have with one another. Uh, none of that is supported in, in, in Mongo, right? So it's kind of uh, um, the respons that responsibility of maintaining a schema or maintaining those relationships, uh, all that needs to be done at the application level as opposed to at the database level. Right? So the, the, data, the, the, the database is only going to be responsible for storing the data. Right, so all, the, all this validation, all that is, is going to now um, be at the application level, which, which mostly was already there. Right? We were, whenever, whenever we were uh, having a data model in Java, we had classes. And the classes were uh, strongly typed. Right? There, was no, there was no way of putting uh, string values into an integer. Right? The, 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 you could not instantiate a class. So the data model at the application level was already validating all, this, all the, the schema, right? the classes was already validating all these things, right? So, so we're going to be uh, pretty much doing the same thing. On, on the app, at the application level, we're going to be validating all the, all the data before we make it uh, go into the database. Uh, so to do that, Mongoose, Mongoose allows us to create schemas, right? C allows us to declare uh, what, are the, what schemas do we want to use. For instance, it allows us to declare uh, that uh, users have usernames and passwords and first names and last names and emails and whatever, right? Uh, and, then, and then reuse this uh, to be able to build a CRUD, uh, you know, create, read, update, delete, um, kind of like a repository, right, that would allow us to find, uh, do finders and, and updates and deletes, you know, very much like you, you can in Java, right? In, uh, in Java, the, uh, it was the CRUD repository that encapsulated all the basic CRUD operations, right? Uh, and, um, and here is something similar. Right, Mongoose provides us that kind of API. You know, you give it the schema, and once you have it a schema, then it creates all the boilerplate uh, accessors that you need for that particular that for that particular uh, data model. So this this plays a part of the data model, in uh, but in in the Node.js world, right? And we use the Mongoose library to create these schemas, this uh, uh, this data model uh, that uh, then we build a CRUD uh, layer on top of it, right? Uh, so that's the uh, the uh, the schema. Once you have the schema, uh, you can you can then uh, create a model, which is the which is the equivalent in Java of the repository, right? This uh, this object that allows you to interact with the database. You know, do the saves, the updates, the deletes, the finders, right? Uh, so it's, this is similar to this. So user model, uh, you use mongoose model, right? And then with the model, you give it a name. This would be a unique name within the mongoose library. Um, and then you give it the schema. What is this, the schema that uh, declares what is the structure of your data, right? Uh, so that it knows how to save and how to validate the, da the data b before storing it in the, in the database. Uh, once you have that, uh, then you can create your own API on how is it that you want to 
communicate with the data, right? So, so you would implement uh, the various finder methods, uh, the creates, the deletes, the updates. Uh, this, this is the, uh, the high-level API that you provide um, on top of right, Mongoose's low-level API, right? Mongoose gives you a very generic API. Right? And, but on top of that, you can, you can wrap it with your own API right? that has a little higher level. Right? So, so because Mongo doesn't know about users or, or courses or, or lessons, doesn't know anything about it. So it gives us a very generic, plain, a very vanilla API. Right? Instead, we, we wrap it around something that is a little higher level right? that has meaning to us. You know, create users, create uh, sessions, create a course, create a lesson. That's a high level for our particular, for our particular uh, domain object. Uh, so here, there's an API. It, uh, it, um, uh, it hides the details of how it's actually being stored. Underneath the implementation, uh, we're going to implement it using Mongoose, right? or MongoDB. We're going to store things in the MongoDB. But notice that the API is high level enough that we could have chosen to store it in MySQL. Right? And, and whoever's using this wouldn't care whether you're using relational databases or uh, a, 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 a non-relational database, right? The API hides those details from you, right? So that's usually a good practice, right? To, to create these APIs that uh, hide the low-level implementation. Um, once, once you create your, uh, your API and, and actually implement it, uh, you can then expose it and uh, export it using Node.js's export um, uh, module um, uh, implementation, you know, very much like today, uh, we in uh, in uh, each, um, in the new versions of JavaScript, you can say export, right? Uh, that's that's a, that's the modern uh, JavaScript uh, uh, support, right? But Node.js has its own way of exporting, uh, making things available to its clients, and that's module dot exports. And what you provide is, you know, whatever you assign it to, uh, assign to export is like you were ex exporting this to the outside. So we're, what we're exporting here is a map, right? It's a JavaScript map. Uh, these are the names, and these are the values. The values are actually references to the functions declared internally to this module. Right? So somebody outside uh, gets getting a hold of this object, and they can say dot update user. Right? And update user, the value is a function. Right? So you can call on that function right, from the outside. Make sense? So yeah, so this is, this is just export, exporting the API. Uh, the actual implementation is, is fairly basic. Uh, you'll notice that. Uh, uh, our, our, all our finders, right? They're using underneath. Underneath, they're using um, uh, Mongoose low-level API that talks to to uh, to the uh, to the Mongo database. Uh, for instance, find user by ID takes as argument the user ID, and then internally it uses uh, the low-level Mongoose API to find by ID. Notice that it doesn't say what to, what it's finding, right? Uh, again, it's gene it's generic, right? It can work with any data model, just like the just like our Java CRUD uh, repositories, right? It had find by ID, right? Or, uh, or um, find all, right? And, and, but then you had to cast it to whatever data type it was actually returning, correct? Again, the, all these, all these uh, repositories give you very generic low-level implementations, find by ID, find one, find one. And, and here, the find by ID takes a, a unique identifier. Uh, this one, the find one, also takes a unique identifier, but it's not the primary key. Right? It's, it's, it's a unique identifier, but it's not the primary. In this case, it's username. Uh, here's another one, find by credentials. Presumably, there's only one person with that username and that password. Uh, so we're filtering by username and password. Uh, uh, then you have create user. It's using uh, the low level dot create, right? which is, is an insert. It's an insert into the database. Uh, delete user. It's using the low level remove, and we're filtering by ID. So remove the users whose ID is user ID. Uh, and then update, right? It's uh, it's updating the the, uh, the the document whose ID is user ID, and it's setting, you know, whatever the new user says, right? So the new user you could you could pass in maybe just the last name, and this would be updating just the last name, right? So all the other fields that you don't provide, they, they would not be updated. Only the ones you actually do provide, right? In in new user. Up. Uh, and. Uh, Let's see. That's it. That's it. This is the user model. This is a user model that then you can build on top of this. You can build, you know, log in, uh, register, uh, you know, retrieve from me the profile for a particular user ID. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's create this. Let's let's actually build this. Um, 